Hello, this is Jim Matthews from GlassHoppa.com and this is another project that caught my interest on Pinterest. I liked it because it's a real attention getter, not like any vessel you'd see in any medium other than glass. As simple as it is, it's the kind of thing that's going to make people stop and look. These are by Caterina Fuscaldo. If you take the time to cruise her Pinterest board or her website, you'll get an eyeful of stuff like this. To start with, I wanted to fiddle with the firing options. Katarina's examples are tack fused, so we'll do that for sure. But what happens if these connected squares get more heat? I started by making some small test tiles to find out. Each square goes about half again its width from the one before it. Then each square on the next row goes between the two above it in checkerboard fashion, overlapping on the bottom corners. It forms a cascade of rows, and it's a little tenuous so you have to be careful, but it's tough to use adhesives because the pieces don't lay flat against each other. Just take your time. I made three or four of these test pieces and fired each one differently. Here's our tack fused result. It went to 1365 Fahrenheit for five minutes, and it looks exactly like we expected. That in itself is reason to celebrate. The next one went to 1430 for five minutes. See the shape of the spaces, how they're beginning to round up? That hints at the direction this would go, given more heat work still. And look at the little sulfur-copper reaction lines where the amber meets the blue. That could be fun. This one I cranked all the way up to 1525 and held it for 10 minutes. See how much the spaces have rounded out? And here's a look at the three side by side. These gave me some ideas to play with, but first, the diced platter. Always a good idea to check your mold before you size your project. This is a 12 inch bowl, and it looks like it will accommodate about a 9 inch square. This kiln shelf is 8.5 inches, just to make sure. I went with 3 quarter inch squares, 2 centimeters and chose the rainbow color scheme since it's Katarina's favorite. As always, there will be a link to the colors used here and my firing schedules on the blog post at glasshoppa.com. Now I know you didn't get to watch me cut all these little squares, but keep coming back. I might release that as special bonus footage in the future. Now here's the finished layout ready to cook. At this point, I noticed a difference between what I've done here and Katarina's example. My edges are square and linear. Hers are zigzag, diamond-like. You'll get the zigzag look by positioning your first pieces like diamonds, point up, and overlapping corners as you go. In subsequent rows, overlap the point of the diamond above, then both the point above and the point beside as each piece goes down. Whichever layout you like. Let's take a look. Mm, looks pretty good. Lifts right off that papyrus paper. Just exactly what we had in mind. Feels secure. Nice solid tack at every corner. Nothing glaringly out of place. Nice. Let's put it into slump. Meanwhile, I got sidetracked and put together a smaller version alternating opal reactive with vanilla cream. I want to full fuse it, like this one. Here's the firing, much like our test tile. You see the white edge roll characteristic of these high sulfur vanilla named glasses. And of course we'll see no real reaction until we juxtapose some copper heavy glasses. I chose this peacock opal placed my prefused creation on top of it and took it again to beyond full fuse. What I want to see are red reaction lines where the copper and sulfur glasses interface. And there we go. As contraction occurred in the kiln, the holes got smaller and smaller. The red reaction lines are there, but not as pronounced as I'd hoped. Again, the white edge roll makes this much more interesting than it would be otherwise. 
See the outlines around the circles? Not exactly what I predicted, but then again, it rarely is. Let's take a look at our slumped platter. Nice. Just right. Wonder what kind of colors it'll throw off. Ooh. I like that very much. Thank you, Katerina Fuscaldo, for inspiring this little project. And thank you for watching and for giving it a try. Let me know how it goes via glasshopper.com. That'll do it.